Hey everybody, it's Al with CAD Cam Wizard, and today we're going to take a look at uh, machining this uh, pinch clamp. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is change the color of it because it's a red color and that's my selection color. So I don't want that to be a conflict, so I'll come into selection and I'll highlight the component. And then I'm going to come over here and turn it to an orange color. And then I'll right click and cancel. Alright. So what that does is just change the color so it's not, it's not the, the red color. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to isolate this geometry. So I'll create a new layer. Alright. And then I'm going to select the components I want to change the layer for. And then I'm going to come over here and just move these to this layer number one, and then I can turn that off. Okay. So now I want to go to a top view, so I can use the toolbar, the active toolbar that's on the screen, or you can hit Control one on your keyboard, or you can use the arrow keys in order to navigate the different views. Okay. So my next step here is to flip the part around. Okay, right now it's running in this orientation. I just want to rotate it. So I'll go to Utilities and Rotate. I'll go ahead and uh, window pick all the geometry and we're going to rotate this uh, 90 degrees in X and that will get the component facing this way. All right, so <clears throat> there's a couple of different features on here, but for this video, I just want to focus on adaptive roughing and uh, it's a high-speed pocket or tricordial machining and this is offered in the Bobcad system in 2D and 3D but I just want to focus on 2D because a lot of shops either work just with 2D geometry um, or uh, they're just more comfortable in that 2D environment so let's kind of set up a, a 2D pocketing routine here now <clears throat> I want to convert the geometry to wireframe okay and in the last uh, couple of videos, I've showed a few ways to do that. Uh, we could come in here and use the section view, and we could, you know, uh, click through here until we get a clean profile, and then convert this to wireframe. Uh, if we do that, our geometry won't be at Z0, okay? Uh, the other way we could do this is extract edges and use project to Z plane and set it to zero. And uh, I'm just going to pick the whole model, and this is the method I'm going to use, and that will get us all our wireframe. Now, when I did it, I did this on the CAD layer. I didn't create a different layer. So I want to isolate just the wireframe geometry. So I'm going to use the blank function here, and I'm just going to hide the model so it's out of the way. Now, when we did this, we actually took all the edges of the model and smushed them down on the Z0 plane. And you can see we have some additional geometry we don't want. And if we select some of it and delete, we'll see that it's still there. So by using this method, I created uh, double entities. So what I want to do is clean that up. We'll go to Utilities, Clean Up and Optimize. I'm going to window pick everything here and choose OK. And that will get rid of all the double entities for us, cleaning up the geometry. Now, Really, because the fillet was drawn here and uh, we have these other features, I'm just going to window pick. I'll go to selection and window pick, and I'm going to delete the stuff that I really don't want, uh, which are all these connecting lines here. You can just zoom in, uh, left click, and delete to get rid of this geometry. All right, so almost done here. All right, that's all gone. Uh, almost. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the construction geometry. We went through this in the last video and not necessarily the best example, just kind of talked about it. So I want to show how it works here. Again, you have your snap points so we can adjust what this value is. Uh, this one over here, this is our construction geometry or XY tracking. And essentially I want to draw a box around this. Now, normally I would just come over to the cam tree and run the job and uh, save the 
the bounding box geometry, but in this example, I just want to create some lines and do some offsets. So we're going to go to line, and uh, we'll just pick up this edge here, and then I want to drag this line out and uh, connect it with this one here. And then I'll choose OK, so we get that one. Then I'm going to go over to this uh, arc here, and we'll do the same thing. You can see we have these leader lines, and uh, they really make it easy to just kind of sketch out some geometry and make sure it's either horizontal or vertical. And that actually works for, for where I'm at. Now, the next thing I want to do is create an offset. So I want to create a boundary a little further beyond. I'm going to use a, a quarter inch. So I'm going to use this um, offset function and I'm going to go around and create some offsets for the part. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is trim these up. So we're going to go to utilities and I'm going to use trim strings and we're going to just click around the part here with the entities that we want to trim together. Alright, now after doing that I can come back in and select the geometry that I don't want and delete that. Uh, I want to remove this line as well because I want to be able to chain around the outside of this. So I'll select that line, shift click to get a chain, and this gives us our, our inside boundary and an outside boundary. Now from here I can go ahead and uh, set up our pocket routine, right? So we're going to go into the cam tree over here, right click on uh, the cam defaults, new job, milling job, three axis machine, we we'll go ahead and run the stock wizard here. It's going to pick up the box that I drew. Uh, we can type in whatever depth that we want it to be. Uh, from here we can set our zero position, so we're going to go to origin and snap on this back corner here, and we'll choose OK. So now we have our job set up with our zero set up. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just load in a pocket routine. Okay, so we're going to right click on the setup. We're going to co go down to mill to axis. From here we can select our geometry. So we want to select the outside shape. So we'll uh, let's make sure that one's selected. So we'll select here. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll go ahead and do that, and that gives us our two boundaries, and I'll set a depth. Alright, now we're going to come into our strategies here, and we're going to choose pocketing. I'm going to just remove the finish because I want to focus on the adaptive roughing here. We'll come in and set our tool size. We're going to go to our patterns. This is going to be advanced and adaptive. We'll adjust our step over amount, and then we're going to just compute. Okay, so what do we see? Well, we see some toolpath, and like we would expect from a pocket routine, it's going to stay within the boundary. And uh, But really we want it to cut around the outside of the part as well, clearing all the stock, um, you know, uh, bossing it up uh, is a a term that comes to mind. So we clear all the material and we leave the part standing up. So we got to adjust our boundary here. Right now it's a, a solid line. So it's it's going to try to stay, you know, stay within the, the outside boundary and cut to the inside boundary. And these areas here where it doesn't fit, that's because of the tool size. If I drop the tool size down, uh, if it's small enough, then it will fit between those boundaries. But if it's not small enough, it won't be able to fit between those boundaries, and uh, it's going to leave all this extra material. So really, what I want to do is treat that inside shape like an island and have it cut in from the outside. So I need to make some adjustments to my geometry to accommodate for this. Uh, for example, if I just go to selection and click on this edge here, and then I change this to a dotted line, uh, let me go ahead and update all the geometry and then recompute. What we're going to see is the tool, tool path is going to come in from that outside edge there because this dotted line lets the software know that that's the open area. If I repeat this process to another edge, right, and then I come in and update.
update all the geometry and then recompute, you'll see it will start coming in through that edge as well. When we repeat this all the way around and we have dotted lines all the way around our part, then it's gonna machine all the way in from the outside, avoiding our inside shape. So we'll update all our geometry here and we'll recompute. And this is the tool path that we're looking for. So it's gonna come in from the outside, work its way in, and then clear out all this information or all this material here. So adaptive roughing or high speed machining or profit mill, it's called a bunch of different names depending on which vendor you're working with, is really the go-to strategy for modern machines. If you're running an older machine and it can't really handle all this tool path, you know, because we get a bunch of line movements, it's a, a lot of code, you can still use an open pocket routine. You just need to use one of these other strategies here, maybe this uh, offset uh, out routine and recompute. This will give you a, a more traditional style tool path, again, working its way in from the outside. So either way, uh, the, the feedback here or the takeaways are when you have a pocket routine dotted lines with the advanced pockets uh, will be used for open pocketing where the tool will start on the outside and work its way in. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, just reply back to wherever this video may be posted. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.